Sunday night I got home from church. We had a neighbor's child. They came and picked him up about 8.30. My wife and I, we took up running this year. I don't recommend that, but if you have to, you must. And so we said, you know, we have to run this weekend. We need to go out for a run. Our boys have been in a Boy Scout camp race, so we put them to bed. My daughter's in the youth activity. And it's one of those nights, you know, it's, you know what it's like with a young family. And we're running every which direction. So we're going to squeeze in a little three or four mile run. When we came through after the second mile, and I saw the lady drop my daughter off. And I said, I'm running until Katie Beth will be back in a little bit. We've got two more miles to go. And I met Katie Beth at the door. She said, where have y'all been? I said, why are the back doors open? She said, who broke the window in the kitchen? Folks, in 10 minutes, while my wife and I made our loop and came back by the house, they had broken into the house. My boys were asleep in bed. Went upstairs and stole a television out of my bedroom and my kids asleep on either side of them. Let me just share that with you because Terry and Ledger explained it, you know, tell everybody where I live, so y'all might as well know the story too. <laughs> but I share that to say at 8, 45 to 9 o'clock on Sunday night, my life changed, my focus changed. Monday, I did not go to work. I told Lisa and Brent, who's on my staff, I called them, I said, y'all get everybody on the speakerphone, I'm going to explain this one time, y'all can do whatever it takes to deal with it today. I was fixing windows, repairing doors. I was passionate, focused, obsessed with securing my house to make sure Whitney and Katie Beth and my boys could go to sleep that night and not in fear. There's nothing like a crisis to make you focus on what's important. Deuteronomy chapter 6 tells us, you know what, you better get your heart right and get focused on what's important. The first is, there is only one God, and you better love Him with all that you have. And your second most important priority, when it comes down to it, is to teach those lessons to your children, to that next generation. You go, Stacy, but our kids are grown. Guess what? You got neighbors that have children and they need male role models. They need senior adults. Our communities across this nation need us to know what is important. And our nation, our communities are in a crisis right now that we need to be praying for. We not only need to be praying for, we need to be investing our time, energy, and effort to change what's on the inside to make a difference for the future of this nation. But it starts with me and what's on the inside. I talk about it's a crisis and we have to have a sense of urgency and a sense of purpose, a sense of focus. And that's what takes me to the passage in 2 Timothy. And it's the last passage. It's a passage a lot of you are familiar with probably. Paul is writing to Timothy here. And Paul is in Rome. He's in prison. And Timothy is his protege. He's the young man that Paul has poured his life into. He's invested in for the future. And in verse 19, closing out this letter that Paul was writing to Timothy, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, the household of Aniphorus, Erastus stayed in Corinth, and I left Trophimus. How do you like those words? I worked on them all the way from Laurel this morning. I left him sick in the Verse 21, Paul says, Timothy, do your best to get here before winter. Well, folks, winter's coming. Paul knew that he had a short period of time. And his closing passage to his young protege was, get here before winter. We don't have much time. Make it urgent. And I share that passage simply to remind you, just like Paul did to Timothy, there are some points in time in our lives, in our nation, in our communities, where we have to have a sense of urgency. And that means starting with our own household our own heart, and what lessons and principles and values that we're teaching to our children and to our neighbor's children. Not just around the dinner table, not just on Sunday mornings, but the Bible said when you're walking down the street, teach them. When you're sitting, teach them. When you're standing, teach them. When you're laying down, teach them. At all hours of the day, constantly, intentionally, teach your co-workers, teach your neighbors, teach your friends, encourage and uplift. And when we change what's on the inside, the outside will be evident. And Alexis de Tocqueville's words will ring truer than they've ever run before in our nation's history. America will be great because of the fiery righteousness, not just preached from the foolishness, but from the righteousness that are lived by its citizens. It's a prayer breakfast. 
Let me lead us through a few moments of quiet prayer for ourselves, for Richmond, Mississippi, and our nation.